Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from the host Imperial Lane, featuring today a two versus two on Moscow outskirts. Is indeed a two versus two. We shall be watching fighting for the Soviets and the fifth guards make a nice call. We shall be watching Nafkuchin and Nith versus a perfect duel and a Wolfenite. I'm not going to bother with what it says in the other thing there. Wolfenite fighting for the German 101st Panzer Brigade. Panzer Brigade, a special formation, in fact, designed with, in mind with fighting Soviet spearhead formations. It shall be interesting to see how this works out here on the Monday Novice Fight, although, as I'm sure you can imagine, it won't be pretty, it won't be very skillfully executed. I'm yasing here at two pioneers to start out from. Perfect tool and the same from Wolf and Knights. So the German players are opting for a lot of territory initially on. Whereas Nith, of course, and his other friend Navkuchen are going for a lot of conscripts right away. Nothing out of the unusual net there. And an MG42 popping up there. And for a perfect tool, we see the Grenadier score, the Mexican Grenadier. But all quite all good, so. Far advancing up there. Conscripts leading the way. Another conscript squad appearing there. One should expect one here as well. There we go. And a straight rush for the victory points for both German players. Definitely interesting. That and there we go. First engagement. Conscript versus Grenadiers. The Grenadiers managed to catch the Conscript in the middle of the road. Conscripts move over towards cover. That's good. Commander Fire from the Pioneers and their MP40s. And that's definitely going to swing things in the favour of the Reich. And meanwhile, second engagement going up over here by the church. Conscripts and combat engineers engaging Pioneers. Grenadiers or MG42 either way need to get over support before Molotov gets locked through the windows. Another engagement over here, the combat units managed to make it into the house. The conscripts here are not doing too well. One pioneer is down, but overall, three conscripts have lost their lives in the name of the Rodina. And the fighting continues up here, and there we go. Conscripts in caught by the MG42, getting suppressed. More conscripts pouring up there. Looks like he abandoned the church in the eastern areas instead of pulling back to his MG42 instead of pulling that up there to hold that position. A bit awkward, but there you go. Bunker immediately going up this early on, I think, is a bad idea. I think he should rather focus on getting some more troops up to the front before setting up even one bunker. Apparently, a perfect tool decides otherwise. Gunner is pushing in here, though. Needs to be careful. The MG42 needs to get closer first. We're seeing another MG42 up there for Wolfenite. Meanwhile, Nith keeps pouring in more troops coming under fire. He might want to get those combat units out before they die a horrific death. While Navkuk's and conscripts are getting murdered. And he needs to get out of there. Why is he? Didn't he retreat? They were pinned in front of an MG42. Molotov up here, but he needs to get those out before losing another squad. And the MG crawls will need to get out of that one. Looks like the Soviets are not so huge on the whole unit preservation bit. And there we go, the comet engineers finally vacate the premises. Their conscript friends get suppressed. And we're seeing a medic bunker up. This close seems a bit awkward. To put it mildly. I mean, I suppose I can appreciate the thought, but it still seems a bit too close. And there we go, popping into the building. To force the Germans back in, and there we go, heading from another angle as well. Well done, catching the MG42 off guard. Well done, in particular, there by Nith. Less well done by a perfect tool who really shouldn't have been moving about his MG42 like that. And again, you need more infantry at the front, more troops instead before getting a medic bunker. Now, of course, we see the position is getting overwhelmed. The MG42 has been pushed up. There's a mortar coming in, but still no infantry, and he's got no munitions to upgrade the gunners. And he runs straight into the Molotov. What are you doing? A perfect tool so far. The only perfect tool to seem to be is for the Soviets. And we're seeing a command bunker up here in the center. You also see that Wolfenat is making some minor progress on the right flank. In fact, let's pop over to him. 
still not all of infantry. Looks like he might be teching up. Yes, indeed. They both are very lacking in infantry and are both quick teching up quickly. One senses there's a strategy, but also one senses it's not necessarily the most well thought out strategy whatsoever. Medic Bunker is still standing. That's going to take some time to take down. We are seeing the weapon support company up there for Nafkuchen. A support weapon company, I don't know. It comes down to the same thing. Mortar on the way. Pioneers are getting overwhelmed. There's nothing to support them. The MD42 is not near where to support them either. Wolf Knight instead popping his MD42 in there, which is not necessarily the most well thought out idea. Instead, he might lose the Pioneer Squad. He needs to get them out of there. MD42 getting veterans to one. Another cost of assault. And there we go, the pioneers are dead. Very much dead. This is not he's not built that building yet. He's getting a mortar. And we are seeing here that a perfect tool is so far slowly pushing forward. We're seeing Nith troops being pushed away. And we're seeing another support weapon company up. No special rifle command for these two special rifle commanders, I don't know. Large force of conscripts getting ready to move out in the name of Comrade Stalin. And straight into an MG42 if they're not careful. Quickly breaking in the window there. Heinz cares not. And of course advancing up like that is generally a good recipe for getting them all suppressed very quickly. Although in this case they do seem to get slightly further ahead since it's focusing on the other squad. But there we go. They in fact end up pinned right in front of the MG42 again. The closer they are the more of an easy target. The more damage you're taking particularly with the MG42. So yeah. They're going to end up very much dead. We see a scout car up there, I'd like to make a nice company, a second one going up there for Wolfenite. Mortar getting close to that German mortar. And we are seeing Jaeger infantry, we are seeing him locking it down with ambush, which actually makes it more lethal. Though, get it away from the banker mate. Bankers always tend to be primary targets for artillery and that's anything near it, it's also going to get hit. I mean there's cover over here as well and there we go, in fact, getting it hit. So Again, not really well thought out, and again, then why also not get this one ambushy, pop it up here, and again, get more out of it in terms of damage. So again, not really see the most bright idea there from Wolf Knight. And we also see here that a perfect tool is pretty much just holding him to a very specific part of the map, whereas Wolf Knight is spreading out to two points. I mean, they're trying to hold an awful lot of map, but a perfect tool is not really putting much effort into it. Which means that Wolfenite is going to be the one awfully overextended, which is definitely also a bad thing. And the MD4 here cleared out in the seconds, not sure why he insisted on having it out in the open. Really poor assault tactics there displayed by Wolfenite. Really should not have happened. Scout car doing like the da can, I like to see a punch HP wagon. Conscripts moving up there. Grenadiers and MD4 in the same building with machine guns. Grenadiers need to get on the field at the very least. There you go, anti-tank grenade, but they will suffer heavily. Panzer gun is popping out. MG re-secured. Gun is pulling back to the banker to reinforce. Which is not so bad an idea. Though he should then reinforce. And he's not reinforcing that either. What are you doing, Wolf and Knight? What are you doing? Nothing, it seems. And now that mortar might fall into Bolshevik hands. An utter disaster, and again, it really seems like the Germans are not quite thinking this through. I mean, I'm not saying the Russians are playing awfully sophisticated in return, but, you know, they've clearly got a better idea. Come on, get the Panzer Grenadiers out there, mate! And why is, for example, a perfect tool not assisting his teammate? Again, he seems more of a perfect tool for his... Opponents and his teammate. Conscripts here might go down. Mortar rounds actually hitting their Yes, there we go. Mortar clear out again. Heavy mortar battery there from Nafkuchen. Definitely not a bad idea in some senses. Certainly get more out of artillery and, I suppose, density than anything else. Going forward, Pioneer is going to be enforced. Another Panzer goes caught on the way. Is he actually Ready. utilizing the first one? There we go. And we're seeing the Gewehr 43 upgrade or Jaeger Light Infantry upgrade. So 
So that should be interesting. We all see the command bunker is gone. And again, I mean, the placement of it was also pretty much straightforward. Again, following the rules from companies run of bunker placement. Again, you don't want it out in the middle of the bloody road. You usually want it behind something still close to the front, but also not something you can directly see and fire at. More Gabir 43 is increasing the firepower at longer range. Might want to clear up those mortars first, and we're seeing a heavy mortar presence here from the Russians. And there we go, dropping conscripts very quickly. Even the Panzer are going to this benefit from it. In particular, as you get more and more veterans here, and as you get the offensive bonuses of veterans you free, a give air for free upgrade is really mean. And there we go, just ending the lives of those mortar crews very swiftly. Come on, shoot! Oh no, you're ah crap! One mortar got cleared out, but the other one, the veteran G2, which is the one you actually wanted gone, escaped, but still able to do a lot of damage, much much quicker. Again, Panzer has benefited from it, even at close range. Of course, it's basically an overall nice upgrade. And there we go, veteran G2 already for these grenadiers. Panzer is popping into the building. Machine gun crew here suffering heavily. We see an anti-aircraft half tank pulling up, firing into the building. Need support. But here we see a huge flaw in the German plan, and you might ask, what flaw is that, Dane? Well, do you see any anti-tank weapons? And that's where you go, oh, shit. Exactly, ladies and gentlemen, our German friends here committed another considerably large mistake. They have absolutely nothing in terms of stopping enemy tanks. In fact, they're going straight for the support armor, caught in the hopes that will save them, but again, it won't necessarily hold up, so that's another huge blunder. Our industry grows to support us. <coughs> You'll see absolutely no harassment attempt from the German or the Russian to watch the right flank and for the Germans it will definitely pay off since there's nothing covering it. So I mean overall not really strong play from the Germans in those senses. It's quite sad. Quite sad yeah. indeed. Standing by. Still reinforcing the troops. Heavily equipped the with the finest in semi-automatic rifles. The Germans did have something called the Gewehr 41, which was actually considerably less useful and had a lot of problems, and they quickly scrapped it. The Gewehr 43 actually came about after the Germans captured the Soviet semi-automatic rifle. The SVT 40 figured how uh, how they did it and then copied it. Probably made a few improvements as they tended to do, although usually at the cost of making things a bit more complicated. Telemine's going up, but that's not really going to hold up. And we are seeing now, in fact, the first tank, a light tank, the T-70. And we're seeing a Katusha out, out as well. As it was also known as the Stalin organ by the Germans. Half tank going up, the T-70 going to hit playing again. We really see that the Germans are absolutely woefully unprepared for this. And by woefully, I mean woefully. This really shouldn't have been happening. And this one could have been a recruit and stolen by the Germans, so well. So yeah, there's a lot of problems at the moment for the Reich and the 101st Panzer Brigade. The brigades generally tended to have a lot of nice equipment, a lot of fancy equipment, while they tended to lack, on the other hand, was actually training time. These chaps are forced away pretty quickly. We're seeing a maximum pushing up here in support of Nith and Nakuken. They're actually coordinating and supporting each other, which is good. Which is definitely more that can be set for the two German players. And there we go, Telemine went off. Oh, lucky them, they didn't die. But again, an outside disaster. More T-70 tanks roll out. A Panzer fourth finally arrives for a perfect tool and granted the fallen first Panzer Brigade wouldn't have had those. Those would only have been part of the second series Panzer Brigade for now. Details, details. Mortar cleared out again. Canadiers forced to retreat in the face of the T-70. Looks like one of the two T-70s in fact went killed right there, blown up to bits and pieces. And we are seeing the heavy panzer calls sort of even harder rushing again, absolutely no anti-tank to cover up. Not even a pack and again, that's a really, really, really bad idea. And really should not even have crossed Wolfenite's mind. At the very least it should have had panzer strikes or something, which is getting and now once the shit has already hit the fan. I mean really 
That's a very poor approach, you should be thinking ahead, not reacting in particular not to tanks because that's pretty much begging for the tanks to get a lot of damage in on you. So in that sense, really, really poor play there by Wolfenite. Not what should be happening again, hopefully a lesson for all of my viewers there. Max, I'm still holding out on this tiny wooden shed, surprisingly enough. Katrusha continues on these rockets. And there we go, Panzerix catch the T-70 and wreck it. Of course there's still the Maxim right there and the infantry not spreading out enough to get a flanking assault. Not a good idea. These Panzer Grenadiers need to retreat. MD4 is ending up quickly starting the conscript assault. Still nothing on the right flank, shame shame. Oh, it's actually time to look at Nith. In fact, Nuff and I'm sorry they got caught up with things. Because again, that was really poorly done there by the Germans. And there we go, lots of mortar damage there again. And having a look at Nuff Cooking, we are seeing the guards, a shock rifle doctrine actually. With shock troops, camo anti tank guns, incendiary barrages, flamethrower tanks, and IS-2s. Something to consider there. And I think. Nith also went for it, which actually is another novice mistake. I mean, generally you want different doctrines, not the exact same one. Usually want some width in that regard. Anti aircraft half tank has been upgraded. Huzzah and hurrah! Troops are enforcing. Panzer von Pack and this. S385 is looking in a very poor state. Panzer 4 pulling away. And there we go. Pat gets off a good shot blowing up the S385. A glorious victory for the Reich. And there we go. Panzer Kampfwagen 5 arriving. Yes, comrade. Katrusha rockets towards here. Nice. Firing, killing a lot of pioneers. Another head on assault spying, knowing the Maxim is there, not really well thought out by Wolf and Knight, but that's nothing unusual. We also see tactical movement here, allowing his infantry to sprint up. Which is definitely not a bad idea. You want that machine gun cleared out though, Wolf and Knight, you want it cleared out. And there you go, one shot from the Panther, wrecks the shed, killing the crew inside. About damn time. Now need to get up to kill that point, recruit that mortar as well, and just get up, do some damage, take some points. And looks like a few conscripts utterly panicked and ran into a door. There we go, they're dead. Oh dear, Katrusha could go down to the Panther. No, he seems to not care. Instead of having other plans, apparently. Russians here, of course, encountering another problem. And we, in fact, see the exact same problem that happened to the Germans now to the Russians. No anti-tank defences, in fact. He lost the T-70s and then immediately moved on to the mechanised armour company. Instead, now going for tank destroyers. I mean, he really set himself up in a nasty way there. Spending a lot of resources instead of just having a few T-34s to quickly ram some tanks. Of course, now also forced to get field guns. I mean, in that sense, also some problems there. Again, always expect enemy armor. Always have something. An Anti-tank gun, field gun, panzer checks, whatever. Always have something. Much just learned taking a point there. Now catching himself in an incendiary barrage. The pioneers burning up because okay, Wolf and I, again, not really displaying huge prowess within the field of infantry preservation. Point here not being taken again, very slow advance for the Germans, come on, a perfect tool, schnell schnell. Also the Austin Flak Panzer is now keeping watch over the front. Panther with a damaged engine. Grenade here, clearing out a Panzer Grenade is scored, again Soviet grenades just seem to be that much more effective compared to German ones. But now he really needs to get out of there, come on Wolf and Knight again, you're too slow. Again, infantry preservation seems to be not their strong suit, which is definitely something that needs to be worked on. And turn around the front of the panther towards where you expect the enemy to come. I mean, this is just begging to take a lot of damage needlessly. 
machine gun stopping up the forwarding advance here, although we'll need some armor support to clear up the half track. Mortis though taking up position as well. Come on, respond with the Panther. Come on, Schnell Schnell. What do you need? Popping back to perfect tool. Who's gone for Jaeger armor? And he's So far, not really utilizing anything in the doctrine, which then really begs the question why on earth did you choose it then? Machine gun getting mortared. Ah, oh, there we go, actually getting a spotting scope for his half track. Of all the things you could have gotten for, he got it for the half track? Well, that was just weird. A panther sorting the mortars right there. Might have wanted to get the machine gun upgrade, you know, to help deal a bit there with the infantry. In fact, we see a full retreat going on there from Nafkuken. Not even trying to lob an anti tank grenade or two if he actually has those. He might lose the AA half track. Don't know. Wolf Knight seems completely caught up in this. Rushing straight into the enemy space. For a bit of good old fashioned carnage. There's this SU-85 here which could pull back, try to deal with it. Field guns. Looks like he will be heading that way. And he's calling in artillery. Will, oh dear, come on. Enough Kuchen. Kuchen, whatever. Get out of there. No, he's not. He's not moving away. He's got all of his troops right next to his headquarters and he's taking a light artillery barrage straight on. Good Lord. That's just awful. At the same time, the Osborne went down here. Full frontal assault going in there from Nith, or the Stuka bombing strike right here could do a lot of damage. T-34 could try and ram the Panther not at the main gun. That would definitely be a good move, but apparently he doesn't care. Instead, we're seeing another sort of machine gun emplacement over there. Ach, du lieber. These Germans really are making a lot of mistakes, but the perfect tool is making absolutely no sense. He's holding barely anything, yet he's losing. And it seems like the Panther's actually being allowed to escape, which really ought to result in some inquiries from the NKVD afterwards. And perhaps someone's family being deported to Siberia. Panzer doesn't give clean ideas with give air forty fleas, increasing their firepower again, veterans one, veterans two. Machine gun dead, no response from the jumps, because again Wolf Knight is overextending his forces, he's barely holding the center, and a perfect tool is just not really performing well. At all. So a bit of quiet between the two sides as both are building up forces. And there we go, that didn't last long. A new build up, in fact several bunkers being set up there by a perfect tool. Not training more units, not building more tanks or anything, just more bunkers. And there we go, quickly rocketing the area. Which will rightly result in the bunkers already being wrecked. That's we're getting cold in as well, there we go, retreat. Not really a well considered assault at all there. East going to fall. Wolf Knight doing nothing again, Wolf Knight. Ah. No attempt at a bombing strike here. Panther fall, need to get out of there. Like you will get wrecked by the looks of it. Pack has been decreed once more, and there we go. Oh, Panther fall, keep moving, keep moving, get behind the trees. Oh, come on, perfect tool. One lone panther being sent over here, although it looks like a second panther is being sent up, but no infantry to actually follow up with. And another bad idea. Taking indirect fire. It's a mortar. Getting stopped here on the machine gun. Mortar rounds and another incendiary barrage to stop the infantry advance. We have casualties. Two panthers from Wolf and Knight, not doing much. 
not even trying to take these points right next to him, despite there being no presence. I mean, Wolfenat is playing... Oddly now, in fact, he's just rushing about with his Panthers home to destroy something, but if he doesn't take any ground, it's not going to matter how much damage he does, because the Russians can then quickly replace it. Ready. I mean, strategy doesn't really seem to be the German strong suit. There we go, they're finally taking some points, popping back to Wolf and Knight. Who's setting up more bunkers? Continue around here. Panther's finally doing something again, he's playing very conservatively with them for some reason, or you know, not fully aggressively. There's an H85, knock it out, get behind it, get past it, get on the side, don't stay in front of it. Another base assault by the looks of it. Shall be expecting another barrage straight on the... yes indeed. And once more, it looks like Nafkuchen is not really paying attention. Oh wait, maybe he is this time around. A field gun spotted. Losses inflicted. As likes the infantry shoots and a Stuka bombings. Why did he call it in there? Why not here, where you're actually having troubles, you dumb person? I mean, really, that doesn't seem to be fully. Clear ideas there from a perfect tool. Just wasting resources over and over again. Making an assault here for the victory point, but not really with any armor support. Again, it's going to be exposed to the T-34 and the half track. It does not really seem fully or well considered by the knight. Get your troops out of there, man. Just retreat. Wixook. Verlassen Sie die Stellung in. Oh Christ! He just wasted his grenades and panzer grenades with give air 40 fleas. That's just dumb. Oh, it looks like he's now flanking the Soviet position over here, which is actually a good idea, but not worth wasting two squads of infantry with give air 40 fleas. In fact, he's losing more infantry now. And it's a perfect tool then supporting this. He's attacking while there's chaos and all that. And no, he isn't. Come on, a perfect tool. Try working with your teammate. Instead of leaving it all to Wolfenite. Which is generally considered a very bad idea when it comes to team play. And it rather seems like Nith isn't even pointing his field guns towards him anymore. Looks like an Another tank, so I might go down to the Panthers. Points are rather low for the Soviets, so perhaps the Germans can pull something off that way. Heavily damaged Panther, KV-8, firing its 45mm gun. And it goes down, no surprises there. The Panther repaired. Panzer 4 rolling up. Light artillery barrage at your command. We have been assigned fresh passing with here. And a field gun getting spotted. Lots of problems in that sense again from the Soviets as well. And now Nif sending out another KV-8 where apparently one failed, another one will succeed. Not entirely sure on the logic there. Lots of troops burning up. Horrible. But again, Wolf Knight's barely got any troops left because he just wasted a ton of infantry with veterancy and good infantry upgrades, so that's just pointless. More squads here being lost to the KV-8. Panther getting repaired. Incendiary barrage against the positions here. Causing those to collapse. Absolutely nothing going on here, just units doing nothing, which is... Not something Nafkuken ought to be doing, he ought to be trying to pressure from here then. Sadly he does not seem to be that sort of inclined. KV-8 continues its reign of terror. 
Panzer IV needs to pull back, and there we go, Veteran 2 for the SIS 3 field gun. Ball being rushed in. Still quiet over here, Nafkuchen really needs to get towards doing something. Panthers getting repaired. And once more another period of quiet, and let's hop over to Nif. Let us also have a mid-game analysis. Currently the Soviets are clearly holding most of the map, the Germans are barely holding on, they don't only hold one victory point at the moment. They have a lot of units, but the problem is they don't seem to utilize them, or even know how to utilize them. They're doing a lot of damage occasionally, but they're never really taking any ground, and what round they're holding, they're actually losing. So overall, it's you now one step forward, two steps back currently for the Germans. They need to pull it together, a perfect tool need to stop being a perfect tool for his enemy and stop start being a perfect tool for his side because currently he's rather helping them more than he's helping his teammate or himself he needs to be more aggressive, he needs to actually be able to support his teammate, he needs to start using his abilities sensibly he needs to start using his doctrine which he's barely using at all I mean that really is a trifecta of bad things going on there and of course Wolf Knight needs to start preserving his units, he needs to stop making pointless assaults and wasting units. He lost a lot of good infantry for no reason at all. Support his tanks with the infantry and start doing some damage that way. And start taking some ground again. They need to clear out this area, need to take this back. I mean one assault with a few panthers of infantry calling out a territory on these two field guns. And that would be gone, then they could push up here and clear out that area, you know. Sensible, straightforward. I mean I'm not even it's not even something advanced they're supposed to expect to do when they actually win. And Perfect Tool just needs to push up here, use his bombing strike, you know, to clear out the field guns. Again, nothing hugely advanced, but apparently even that seems currently beyond their grasp. Of course, the Soviets are not beyond, you know, reproach. They're constantly having troubles dealing with the two Panthers, constantly driving into the base, no ramming, barely any anti-tank grenades, and even the field guns seem to have trouble, you know, pointing at them. They, there's really a lack of coordination between the players there as well. I mean, basically, both sides seem very uncoordinated and not clearly having any ideas. Problems with getting anti-tank defense up in time as well. It's very much, you know, reactive rather than active play from both sides, which rather means it's also considerably more random since they're both reacting to the other. And the only one seemingly acting even a bit is Wolfenite, and he's not doing so very well. At least he's doing something, which is more than can be what's set for his teammate, a perfect tool, who again is not really achieving much either. Again, he's just standing about most of the fight. But for the Soviets, they need to clear out this, they need to get rid of the Pams, and again, they need to ram them, anti tank grenade, focus them with field guns, get them out of the picture, push up, secure the center, and I mean, that's pretty much it. As opposed to just reducing or just launching a full assault and completely wiping perfect tool out would also help because that would really leave Wolf Knight on his own. So I mean there are of course several things to consider but also they need to get this force moving and need to keep up some pressure towards this sort of area. So there you go. Let's return to the fight. Let's see what happens. Looks like the Panther's been sent here on a small mission of harassment. Moving in, no machine gun upgrades, so a bit against infantry. The sector is at risk. Let's choose your barrages. Looks like a perfect tool is actually providing the infantry to support the Panther, that's good for once. Another incendiary barrage. Towards the entire bunker complex set up there by Wolf and I, an awful lot of manpower munitions going into that. Panther raging about here behind enemy lines, might try and catch the Katusha, that would definitely pay off. They've opened up on the Will he catch it? Will he spot it? Will he destroy it? Panther goes going to these men up here. I hope they're not too close to the bombing strike. There we go, one field gun is down. KV-8 in trouble. Infantry needs to get away, get away, Rukzuk! Come on! Perfect tool. Whoa! 
Huh. I suppose that was a bunker near one of those rare ones who actually did something. Punch gives them the run as Panzer has gear 40 flees and other weapons push them away. Panther continues to wreak havoc, but without real support. And again, where's the tank? Where's the half tank? Where's anything? Come on, perfect tool. Push! Uh -huh. And at the same time, the response time here is absolutely the dreadful. There's still been no attempt at a single anti tank grenade or ramming from the Soviet players. I mean, really? And once more, the Panther's done a lot of damage and can now pull away safely. This really shouldn't be happening. Yet it is. And these Panzergrenades should not be pushed into assault. But again, Wolf Knight seems very much intent on wasting German infantry. Pushing out there. Doing nasty damage to the Soviets. Mort's being pushed away and looks like an IS-2 arrives there for Nafkuchen. They've opened up on us! Panzer IV repairing, not even holding the central victory point. But Nafkuchen still has a large force on the right flank doing nothing except guarding. Panzer is tearing into the field gun right here. Panthers be careful of exposing their rear to the enemy, always keep the front towards the enemy. In fact, Pants, the commanders, were pretty much told they should always keep the frontal part of the tank towards the enemy, because that's the strongest part. IS-2 here versus two Panthers and a Panther force supported by two field guns, including one veteran D2. Having trouble penetrating the thick frontal armor. None of the shot tank team managed to penetrate the armor. And there we go, Panther already down to half health, needs to get away, Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg, Metron 2 on this Panther though, and a third one arriving now from Perfect Tool, why not go for that, you know, Jaeger armor, elephant tank destroyer you have mate, instead of building more resources towards Panthers now, and there we go, full on assault into the flank, finally forcing Wolf Knight to pull back his Panthers, try and keep things contained here, about time though, and then for some reason he's sending a panther all its way over here. Again, lack of coordination, lack of a clear idea. Supply sector under attack. Looks like the Katrusia might finally go down. Will the Germans finally catch it? Just Blitzkrieg and hunt it down. No, he's turning away. God damn it. Panther's not been repaired, but they're actually being sent over here. Seems like an astoundingly bad idea, or the Maxi the T-34 finally going down. And this bunker hasn't even been upgraded. Panzer is though quickly on the scene. Fresh upgrade with the Gavir 43. As conscripts move in. And more troops are popping in. Tearing through the conscripts. Panthers pulling back. Three Panthers, all heavily damaged by the way. Field guns having suffered none. And they need repairs. Definitely more than your grenades. Come on, get out of the wolf and I again. You're too slow to react. Too slow. Bobbing out enough, Kuken. And there we go, he just lost another Panzer squad, the one who just reached Veterans. He won again, the Wolf and Knight is about as swift as a snail when it comes to presenting his troops, it seems. Panzer up there for a perfect tool. So it plays not really much, the eye is too already down to half health, not really a good thing either. More T 34s. And Nith seems to be about in the same position as a perfect tool, except he's doing moderately better, in fact, holding the victory point. But it still comes over to the other guy who managed to take most, in fact, half the map. 
So again, there are some definite issues here at play in terms of teamwork and burdens. In this case, Nath Kukin bearing most of the burden, while Nif does less. <coughs> But two bet 22 Panthers are only a powerful tool as long as they're repaired, maintained. Enemy infantry. No attempt at counter mortaring. Another Panther we have out for a perfect tool. And are going to bombard bot his enemy out of it, but still no elephant to so say, you know, get some good range. No, I got those H-85s, I assume and everything else from a safe range. Nothing like that at all. That's true repaired. What shall Nafku can be doing? The enemy is reduced to 200 points. What do you need? We're under attack! More Katrusha fire. Secure that victory point, gentlemen. The enemy has taken our supply sector. And of course another incendio barrage because again they're giving the Russians so much munitions. Again, they're so slow and they haven't even taken the point right next to the base. I mean really. Just poor, poor map control from the Germans. Again, so many mistakes. In particular, in allowing them to have this point, again, they're just helping them feed the incendiary barrages, which again makes it harder for them to take a single point. Yet they insist on doing it. IS-2 and T-34 push up quickly knocking out the mortar. Panthers need to get moving. But Wolf now, of course, is not moving. But there we go, finally they head out. And that T-34 is quickly going to go down. There we go, the Ice 2 stuns one of the pants, thus. Oh no, Navkuk are making a huge mistake, they're actually exposing the rear armor. of it. There's a button here for reversing. Instead he exposes the rear armor, allowing the Panthers a much easier chance of taking it down. That was just poorly conceived. That IS-2 is definitely going to go down. And... There we go. Dead, charging straight into the rear lines, but that Panther's going to go down quickly. So many few guns once they actually point them the proper way. Having that perfect tool here. Who's He's got no munitions left there, he's got a ton of manpower, but he's not using it. Another mistake here, Panthers tank through, just destroy as much as you can. Wolfenite. T-34 down, get the KV-8 as well. Panther Velf is bombarding, perfect tool action advancing. Santa seeing heavy fighting. MD42 pointing in the wrong direction. Splendid. Deal with the SU-85. Come on. Barely any infantry left for Wolfnut because again he manages it. Anything but well. An absolute use of the Blitzkrieg ability, which again is not really a good thing there by the Germans. Just shows how much they fail to appreciate their armor and their army. Barely an infantry, of course, for a perfect tool as well. Slight problems with fraps, my apologies. He could consider spending some more. Manpower towards Panzer Gunners to support something. We took out an Is that we're getting a Stug now. Panthers making their way through lots of Soviet infantry. 
They have one victory point again, they need another one, they just need as many as possible, come on! How about setting up something to actually guard the point? Well... Conscripts dying in front of the mighty Panthers. But the Soviets continue advancing and they barely hold any of the map. Again, German map control is not really good. It seems non-existent. If anything... Which again is not really good. I'd rather highlight some serious issues on the behalf of Wolfenite, who seems only to care about his Panthers. Everything else just seems, you know, not to really matter. And it's great he can do a lot of damage with them, but if you can't hold the map, it matters nothing. It matters nothing, and that's rather a problem. He's so utterly infatuated with the Panthers, he's forgetting about everything else. Which is actually losing them the fight. But at the same time, we just see here that, you know, perfect tool is not really achieving much. Moving up with a Stug and a Panzer IV. Letting everything rip on these conscripts, but due to light cover, they're a bit harder to get at. And an H-85, it might want to focus on them rather than the conscripts, just saying. Instead, they end up pulling back. And that was that Stug. One of our panzers has been destroyed. Again, perfect tool, not really handing this perfectly. And once more he's lost the victory point and he likely won't get it back without help from Wolfenart, which again rather says a lot about a perfect tool. He's not really useful at all. He needs to be more aggressive, but he also needs to be, you know, able to flank. He needs to move in from different angles, and he definitely needs to work on preserving his units. Again, he's losing just a ton of armor. And now it looks like enough crew can ascend in another IS-2. Attacking up the main road again. I mean, there's not even, you know, an idea of, you know, flanking up here. Trying to flank them that way. It's a perfect way, but again, apparently the only way a perfect tool knows is straight ahead. And now once more Wolf and Ice once more forced to pull in his Panthers. And again, pretty much lose control of this point again. It's quite amazing. But now the Panthers are rolling ahead. As you really find getting knocked out. You know, keep moving, keep moving. Blitz, get behind them. Ach du lieber. Again, they don't really seem to know how to use the tanks, how to use their armies. So many flaws, so many wrong things to point out. Ice 2 continues to rumble forwards. Panzer 4 firing away. At least moderately well preserved. Panzer Bathers though need to get away. But no. Nothing like that. Almost as usual. Wolf Knight. There we go, the Ice 2 continues forward, and again, nothing, you know, to move the Panzer Werfers away. Terrible unit preservation once more from a perfect tool. We do see Veteran 2 for the Panzer 4, which is definitely a boon, but that's about it. He's just losing lots of units without sense or reason. It's like he doesn't care. And thus doesn't care about winning. Lots of camouflage anti-tank, it's not entirely sure what that's supposed to do right there. Panzer force slowly rolling forwards, doing a bit there, killing a few, but again needs to be careful, needs to get back, but there we go, too slow. Anti-tank grenade. 
And again, just know how much of the rest of the map is just unguarded. Looks like we're finally seeing some sort of attempt at regaining that victory point over there, but it's going to be painful. There's going to be three field guns ready to take on the fascists. And the Panthers haven't been fully repaired. Oh dear. Well, let's see how it goes. Apparently exposing the rear right away to the fuel guns, which is generally a bad idea. Not connecting this either. And he's not dealt with this. Of course, he needs to send the Panzer. He needs to get this before he can rush in the Panzer. He needs to deal with the fuel guns. Go, Panthers advancing. Shoot the half track, mate. Priorities. What do you need? Veterans is free. There we go. Get behind. Pull out the Panthers. You've got a veterans free one, by the way, but still push on and pull those out. Oh dear. And he just lost his veterans is free Panther. That's just amazing. Really bad. While the assault, of course, continues up here because, again, a perfect tool simply can't keep it contained without a wolf. Knight. Enter to this final game behind, and we're actually seeing Incendi. Attila getting called in so close. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, I've run out of hard drive space. Surprisingly enough, I thought I had more, but apparently, just lost about 20 seconds there, so my apologies, though, again. Atrocious unit preservation being displayed there. Lots of infantry lost over here. Tanks being lost left and right. And again, a perfect tool being pushed back because, again, he can't organize simple resistance. Because, again, his unit preservation and simple tactics has also been pretty much atrocious. Ambush MG42 opening up there on the conscripts. Much late for that now. But yeah, absolute carnage left and right. And just so much being lost senselessly. And now I'm IS2 for Nith as well. You need something? So basically a lot of mistakes been committed by both sides, but ultimately again the ones that are the worst are the German ones which ultimately result in their defeat. And they were so close to victory as well, which just makes it worse. Another panther out, which again Wolf Knight just seems to pour out. And while he's sort of all right at preserving some of them, I mean, ultimately he just doesn't get as much out of them as he could. He's ultimately not holding the victory points as well. He can't even hold that one. Because, again, he keeps losing his infantry because he's not preserving it. So there we go, Panthers rolling forwards. Opening up then the KV-8. Panther taking a few nasty hits. Veterans in Panther doing a lot of damage there to the KV-8. Getting behind all the field guns, but again, just rushing in with everything he can. While he's losing the centers, so ultimately a bit of a loss. Looks like a perfect tool has been relegated to all that, but again, incendiary barrages. And another incendiary barrage, because again, they haven't even taken this. Ah. And game over. Lost for the Reich. Lost for the 101st Panzer Brigade again. Largely the only Germans fought. I mean, again, there were some massive mistakes from both sides. Russian, no, not really good armor tactics either. When they actually had to use tanks, failure to you know, stop Panthers inside their base with field guns, T-34s, and anti tank grenades. Really, repeated failures there, which is not really good. But at the same time, they had some better strategic ideas. They had a better grasp of the map 
overall they worked better overall as well although again that was a clear division that Nith was the one who was sort of lacking behind which Nachkuchen or whatever had to pull forwards and Wolf and I had to do the same but at the same time he simply couldn't hold the map he was utterly unable he had much much worse unit preservation and an utter f inability to actually consider you know even taking a point right next to his base again ultimately these two munitions point basically fed the Soviets with so many ins munitions they could constantly call down incendiary barrages which was really one of the things that lost them the game again poor ability to conceptualize the entire map and what it actually means to hold the map I mean that was one of the many things which led against the Germans with a perfect tool did more to help his opponents than his own team. He just sat about doing nothing for half the match. Built a lot of bunkers, lost a lot of bunkers, he barely flanked the S-85s, just continued to attack straight into the line of fire. So many poor tactics from the Germans. I mean it's quite amazing how they just kept on doing the same things without even changing remotely. And he barely used his doctrine. And when he did it was not really well used either, so I mean a perfect tool really needs to get its grip together, you know, figure things out. I mean, certainly with the Russians, but at least they show promise. A perfect tool currently does not. And, you know, Wolf Knight, while also having some promise, really needs to get the entire act together. He's only so utterly focused on tanks, but he forgets everything else and thus loses the match because he forgets about everything else. Again, he's got no clear overall strategic oversight. I mean, that. The, Russians had, they at least had a better grasp of strategy and a better grasp of the map. Again, so many mistakes they committed and ultimately it was in the Russians' favour. So there you go. Hope you learned something from this match. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? If you didn't, well, why not to replay your own? Provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.